Okay, so I'm just using this hypothetical. I'm not actually in a romantic relationship, but we'll use it because a lot of people get a lot of pain in, in romantic relationships. Um, if I'm in a romantic relationship, how do I transcend? Let's say I'm in a relationship and it's carrying on. I'm um, in a relationship, how I transcend? Okay, there's a few things. One is to find out how my ego gets hooked into that relationship and makes it special. As soon as, so with one of, one of the person, there'll be things my ego will project onto the other person and it will say special, like, oh, she has beautiful hair, or, oh, she's really, really funny, she's got a good sense of humor, or, and these things then become special attributes, which my ego hooks in, and then it becomes a thing where there's a story and there is a, that they have an asset, which I think, the asset is actually a form of specialness, which means I don't feel I can get that from my infinite connection to God. It's like I have to go into a limited thing where the source of happiness <coughs> is found in this person. Like, they make me laugh and then I feel happy and free on the inside. So I need this like a drug, this person like a drug, to make me laugh. Uh, but that's a, that's a limited projection, which I've made special, thinking that I... If I didn't let that go, there'd be infinite happiness and laughter within, in this now. So it gets projected, like the source of happiness gets projected in the special qualities that my ego projects onto them. So let's say, oh, she has a lovely smile. So <coughs> how would I transcend? What, what are the tools I do? Oh, I've got this story, she has a beautiful smile. So I'll go, I place, I place, uh, I place wh whoever, place X into God's infinite light and love and I pray for a miracle. I cancel my belief in, should I make up a name, what should we call her? Um, call her Geranium. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's say I've got a girlfriend and her name's Geranium. And, um, and uh, so, I, oh Geranium has a beautiful, so I cancel Geranium's beautiful smile, I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. Now when I do that, because I have a picture and a feeling attached to her beautiful smile. I want to delete that, you know, so each time I cancel it, I, go, uh, I cancel my belief, geranium's got a beautiful smile, I'm an infinite being, and I, it dissolves in light. You know, I'm clearing the data so it doesn't exist in my consciousness. It's like 100% like deleting data. Does, does that make sense? I want to have complete deletion of that data that she has a beautiful smile because it's a projection from my ego that's making her special. So I just do that, cancel my belief. I'm an in, when I say I'm an infinite being, this is how I transcend. It's like I dissolve it in complete white light. So that it, I, I do not want it to exist in my consciousness. I want to clear the data 100%. I cancel my, or I place whatever it is, I place her geranium's beautiful smile into God's infinite light and love, and I pray for a miracle. Or I pray for a miracle and a shift in my perception see her beautiful smile differently until it no longer, until I no longer track it, until it's no longer meaningful or until I feel I'm in a position of neutrality around that smile. So I want to be in a place where, let's say I'm talking about the observer, I'm, when she's smiling I'm in the witnesser, but if I'm in my ego I'm making a story that I like your beautiful smile, that's a dualistic story of specialness, there's a me that likes you having a special thought. But if I go to the observer of that story, so that's another way of dissolving, to go to the observer. Okay, so let's say I think geranium's got a beautiful smile. Okay, so now I'm in this, what I call fantasy. In this now, I'm using fantasy. Oh, I miss her because she's got a beautiful smile. But what's observing the story of me thinking I miss her beautiful smile? So let me go to the observer of this story that I'm missing out because I'm not seeing her beautiful smile now. And the observer of the story is not missing her smile. Yeah? So if you go to the observer, or if the observer is missing her smile, then go to the observer of that observer. And that observer is not missing her smile. And then you become present again. So, so that's three ways. One is cancelling. One is placing to God's infinite light and love and praying for a miracle to see her smile. The other way is to go to the observer. Um, if you're doing other spiritual practices, uh, you can let it go. Um, the other tool uh, is just a, a general technique for enlightenment is try never to track anything. Just stay in the now. Okay? So 
if you notice that you're starting to think a thought about a person that they're special, cut it immediately and come back to the now. So the way that attachments build up is that you allow yourself to go over and over in your head how special they are. So every second you allow that to go in your head how special they are in whatever property, that attachment is building up energy and is building up power in your, in your ego. Now, it's always, it's always fun if you see them every day and they're smiling at you, it's kind of joyful. But in the day they say, I'm done to you, you know, is the day that pain of that attachment will come up. So if you haven't been clearing your attachment every day, then the day they leave you is the day you'll feel the pain of that attachment. If you're an addict and you're fantasizing about them and you're feeling high on them every day, then when they leave you and dump you, you get more pain. Whereas if you're clearing it out, so if I was in a relationship, I'd be trying to clear the data on a consistent basis, not letting it build up. Then when they dump you, not sounding very hopeful in this video, but when they dump you, you feel... So there's a thing that all enlightened teachers say that there's only, only the infinite that stays with you all the time. Everything in this world is passing and, uh, and changing. Even people have to die, even if they love you, but they, they, people also die as well. It's not a case that they dumped you. And you still have to, then you, you face the pain of them not being physically present for you. So if you clear up your attachments and process things before they die, I did that with my mother. I did pre-grieving, pre-release of the attachment before her death. So then on death, there's less pain than if you just don't transcend it before uh, thing. Also, if you're, that's also a tip if you're in a relationship and you have to let them go. You can pre-process the attachment before you let them go. That way you, you stay more powerful. So how do you transcend? So apart from doing general spiritual work, The Course in Miracles, uh, there's the observer, there's placing to God's information. Oh, feet. Thank you. Thank you. There's one other thing. Okay, so if you're building up attachment or any energies, let's say well, every time I meet geranium I feel high, or every time she's gone I feel like lonely, so actually I can employ the tool of field feelings. So it's like, um, oh, actually that's a good question actually, that's a good thing. If I, like, let's say geranium's gone on holiday for three months and she comes in and I feel high, you know, oh geranium's here and she's smiling at me, I'd go to the observer of that and collapse that joy because that would be an opportunity to dissolve the attachment of the high. The, the high that I get every time she's here is the high of miss, n missing her subtly and my ego feeling deprived of her. And now that ego deflation disappearing and getting a stronger connection to God. Does that make sense? So it's not really the high of her. It's I missed her and now I get the high of not missing her. But that's really from God. So you don't get highs from donuts and, and people. There is a constant, let's say, enlightened now of holiness and oneness in each holy instant where e each moment is equally perfect. But when you're in ego attachment, you feel less when they're not there and you feel more when they are there. That's like an, uh, that's an artificial ego deflation inflation uh, problem. So, uh, but I can feel out the high, feel out the high, also feeling out the miss missing them or feeling lonely. I can just sit with those feelings and dissolve it. Then what will happen is you get a more constant evenness throughout the day and constant presence where each moment is equally beautiful whether they're there or not so you can feel out so that would be a good tool anytime you're feeling lonely that they leave sit and feel that feeling let the story go or if you're feeling high let's say they've just come and uh, you're feeling high and they've left and you're feeling that an artificial high you could feel that out feel that high out get to a more even, peaceful, s still place. And then that will uh, sort of, you can feel out the artificial high and the artificial loneliness. So feel the feelings, the observer, cancelling beliefs, and placing them into God's infinite light and love and praying for a miracle. Those would be some of my key tools, the ones I personally use for transcendence. Not to say there's thousands of more different spiritual tools out there. Um, yeah.